Before we get to our, our, our studio guest in just a moment, I'd like to make a quick mention. This program is made possible by a lot of great people, including the good folks at Western States Bus Services, where they are hiring part-time bus drivers right now. Split shifts five days per week, summers off, and scheduled on school days. Pay is $10.75 per hour. Apply today by contacting 733-8003. Western States Bus Services is an equal opportunity employer. Now, the key here is, before we actually hear from Dr. Jonathan Tripp, is to make sure the doctor has a working microphone. All right, test. Yeah, there, there you are. go. <laughs> I'm here this morning. <laughs> we were just talking off air for a, uh, a short while about us just a lot of the things that inspire people to go into medicine, and, and probably you included, uh, when you especially get involved with family medicine, we're going to be dealing with some of that today. Yeah, yeah. if I give you a, the long story, you won't want to hear it. But <laughs> bottom line is, is going into medicine for most physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, is they really do want to help people. Uh, but as a general personality, we're, we like to be fix-it people as well, kind of like your local handyman, except now we're working on bodies instead of your home. Yeah. And uh, so today's topic, which is uh, called bruises, sprains, and breaks, who to turn to, is really one that's a lot of fun for me because I'm a fix-it guy. In fact, my uh, areas that I really keyed into when I did all of my uh, rotations and training turned out to be what I call sports medicine or orthopedic surgery, uh, as well as the dermatology. And so as a result, a lot of the things that I emphasize or that I have fun doing are, are those topics. So when we uh, go through today, there's a lot of experiences I'll try to throw in that are recent that we've had in our office. Uh, I've also been an ER physician on and off most of my 12 or 13 years out of residency. And uh, that brings a lot of expertise to the clinic that might not otherwise be there. You have mentioned too in the past. I always, I love that story when you mentioned being at a ball game and all of a sudden, you know, somebody needed a little bit of medical assistance and there you were and you were pressed into service. Yeah. No, Same it, idea really too. It is. It is. Uh, but, you know, that's what I've learned uh, with a little experience is most of the time when somebody gets hurt on the field, I give them a little, I give them a minute or two because most of the time people get up, they walk off, they're fine. I don't need to run down to the field and, you know, put my Superman cape on and save the day. Yes. <laughs> I was watching a baseball game yesterday, and David Ortiz twice during the game fouled a pitch off his ankle, or an ankle. And, and the second time, he literally got down on his knees, put his hands down on the field. The trainers came out, and then he stood back up and said, I'm okay. So I think you're right. It it takes sometimes that, that initial pain bothers you, but then it subsides after that. It's, and it depends on our motivation. I have a great story about my oldest son, Christian, that when he was a three-year-old, two- or three-year-old, if he was playing outside and got hurt and mom was nearby, you'd hear the cry of pain. You could tell that he was really hurt. He was not faking. And mom would come out, and almost in about a 10-second period, he'd stand up and say, I'm okay, because his worry was if he was hurt, mom's going to call him inside. Yes. <laughs> Motivation being, being a big key there. Hey, before we reach the first break today, we should mention... Uh, for people who'd like to actually get in touch with you at Trip Family Medicine, a number of ways they can actually go about doing that. Yeah, our, the easiest for me, and maybe I'm the old school guy, but is the telephone number. It's 208-933-4400. So that's 933-4400. And uh, as they say in uh, radio, we have uh, operators waiting or something along those lines, at least a front desk. Yes. But uh, also on Facebook at Trip Family Medicine and uh, on the internet is uh, tripfamilymedicine.com, all of which are good sites for you to learn a little bit about our practice, uh, see if we're a fit for you because we continue to take new patients. In fact, we have more new patients per day than I've had in any other clinic I've ever been in. So it's it's a lot of fun to see that trend. We want we want to point out, too, that uh, in the next segment, we'll be able to take some telephone calls if people are uh, inclined to call us and if they have a question or two. But, you know, since you are dealing with a lot of things like scrapes and the like, uh, I can remember being a kid, you know, outside playing, I was always scraping my knees or, you know, uh, especially my knees seem to be the worst part of it, sometimes my elbows. But those, those little cuts you can sometimes get on the surface of a joint like that can become very serious. Yeah, it's most of the time they're going to heal themselves. That's the beauty of the body is it most of the time will take care of itself. It's when things seem to hang on, they don't heal, they get worse, they get more swollen, more red, or especially if they start to ooze pus, that's a bad sign. That's time to get something else, to get, get other help. 
And so what we're here to talk about today is who do you go to when you get hurt? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, when I was a kid, my mother would just spray a little methylate or something on it or Love use a that. little peroxide and that would be the end of it and put a bandage over it. But in today's uh, climate too, we're dealing with some more, more and more drug resistant bacteria and the like. So sometimes getting that checked out is just a good idea in the first place, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, uh, as I came out of practice, I had been in mostly hospital or came out of uh, training I'd been mostly in hospital exposure where I saw a lot of the resistant uh, staph infections. But in the community, it was nearly unheard of. The most common bacteria at the time for a skin infection was strep, uh, kind of like your strep throat, a little different, but uh, also a, a very common staph. But what's come now is we have a resistant staph or called MRSA, MRSA, and it is by far the most common, and not all antibiotics will take care of it. We've got more on this subject coming up in just a moment. Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us. This is Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX at News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. If you have a question or comment for the doctor, feel free to give us a call on the other side of the break. Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us. Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine till 9 o'clock this morning. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is Top Story with Bill Colley as well. And uh, we were just talking a little bit about some things people could be on the lookout for. Um, sometimes you get a cut on your forehead. Other times we were talking about bicep injuries. Yep. Things that people may think are, are minor at the time, but... Not always. No, in fact, uh, I'm definitely not one to say, uh, call, you know, sound the alarm on every injury. But uh, a lot of times we get little head injuries. Uh, you know, kiddo falls down, hits their head on the corner of something and they'll get uh, just a goose egg, and that's often okay, especially if the child in about two or three minutes returns to their normal activity level and their eyes look good and their, phys their motor skills are good and needs a little ice and the goose egg is taken care of. But other times the kid gets real tired, kind of lethargic, hanging around, just doesn't seem to be themselves. That could be a, a bleed in the brain, not just a goose egg on the outside. So that's bruises are not uh, always just need time. Another example of a bruise that gives you trouble is a crush injury to one of the limbs. Something gets hit pretty hard or uh, run over by a motorcycle or fallen on by a cinder block, something like that, that your leg or your arm, uh, you, you can use it, it moves, but it hurts like crazy and it just swells and bruises and that swelling can be within the muscle compartment and give you a condition called compartment syndrome that you can lose the entire limb. So. Those aren't bruises to wait several days and see if they go away. Um, but on the, on the whole, if you can identify how you got the bruise, it's usually not a big deal. If you start getting bruises, especially ones that get bigger, that you have no idea where they came from, that's time to see your doctor because that's, that's not an injury issue. We want to point out, too, if you have a question or comment, you may have come across an injury like that on your own, or you, you, you may have something currently that you're a little concerned about, feel free to give us a telephone call at 736 300 Spider bites. I had one of those the other day, and my skin got very purplish for a good two uh, two inch radius. Yeah. But within a couple of days, it was gone. But a friend of mine had a similar bite from a brown recluse. Spent three days in a hospital. Ooh, brown recluse. That is a tough one to take care of uh, because the poison itself is just continues to eat down and through the skin. And its best treatment is getting rid of the the tissue that's already in trouble. But a lot of people have what they call a spider bite. They never saw the spider. And it becomes a little pimple, it gets bigger, and then it becomes a boil, and it gets bigger. And it does it quickly over two, three days. You can engulf, you know, a big part of your limb. And uh, those are ones that need attention sooner than later. If you, if you have a pimple that hangs around for a week, nobody really gets upset. But if that pimple develops into a 50-cent piece or, you know, bigger, now it's time to talk about what, what else to do and see somebody about that. Uh, you mentioned hitting the head. We often get a, a head laceration, and even a small one will bleed like crazy. The good news is most of the time on the head, the bleeding after going like crazy for a while stops. Uh, but putting that back together, especially if it's more than maybe, you know, especially if it's an inch or bigger, that needs some stitches or staples, and that can all be done at your family medicine office that does not have to go to the ER uh, what's really nice is people don't understand, what, what's nice about going to family medicine is they don't understand that you can get that exam, you can get the stitches, you can get the staples, at least at our office, with the expertise of somebody who's done ER, 
um, without the big price ticket that goes with going to the ER. The ER physicians are excellent at what they do, but you know, if you're not well insured or uh, paying on your own, believe me, a visit to our office is a lot less expensive. <laughs> we should we should point out too again just to for those people listening just the contact information. For the, for the office is uh, telephone number is 933-4400. Our uh, website is tripvalleymedicine.com and you can find us at Trip Valley Medicine on Facebook as well. Um, uh, just in keeping with that idea of when to go where because that's really the big topic of today is if I have an injury do I go to the specialist? Do I go to the ER? How do I do this? And let me tell you a couple of quick ideas, and that is often if you have an injury, let's say an ankle sprain or a laceration, the immediate reaction is i got to go to the emergency room. I need an x-ray, and I need to, you know, find out if this is limb or life-threatening. And the answer is rarely is it life-threatening. And if it's limb-threatening, at the same time, you can usually get in at a family medicine doc as quickly or nearly as quickly as the emergency room and often quicker because you don't have the weight if your doc says come on in they usually mean come on in um, so it can be evaluated and if you need to see a specialist frequently that interaction or that uh, being seen by the specialist can be facilitated by the family medicine doc rather than just simply calling the specialist's office and saying hey you know I hurt my ankle and getting the response of, well, we can't fit you in today, go to the ER, and if it's bad enough, they'll call me. I, I remember a story about uh, Jerry Kramer, who lives in Boise, I guess, played for the Packers back in the 60s, went to see the doctor one day, and the doctor was looking over an x-ray and said, oh, but this break healed very nicely in your leg. And he'd never noticed at any point that he'd broken his leg, and it apparently had been some time in the previous few years. But he had he'd gone through life uh, without realizing he'd done it. The doctor didn't realize. The doctor thought someone must have treated it because it healed well. And uh, sometimes people just simply don't respond because of a high pain to tolerance. I went nine days one time on a broken leg because I, I just finally, when I couldn't tie the shoes on my left foot, decided I better have it checked out, and it was a fibula that had been broken. Yep. But those things do happen now and then to people, and and. After nine days, I guess you should, if you've got swelling, probably get someone to check out, check it out. Yeah, things should progressively get better on, a, on an injury that you think is not serious. If they're not getting better, especially within about a week, if they're not, it doesn't mean they have to be perfect, but if they're not improving, probably time to get that checked out. And, and uh, dislocations, you have a lot of those, especially with the high school athletes, right? We do. Uh, in fact, a great example is a 13-year-old young lady who was running on the track, got tripped, fell forward on her hand, and actually dislocated her pinky finger right in the middle. And we thought it was broken because of the way it looked. But it also split open the skin on the palm side of her finger. So this was one that really is kind of a complicated dislocation. But with, uh, I'll say, the excellent help of Dr. McKee, one of our orthopedic surgeons, by telephone and by getting an x-ray and, you know, letting him tutor me or, uh, you know, guide, make sure that we weren't uh, missing anything, we were able to relocate the finger, clean it out, stitch it back up, send the second set of films, and he was able to confirm that, hey, you know, it looks like nothing ever happened on that finger. So everything that could have been done for that young lady, uh, you know, in an emergency room situation was done with the help of a specialist on the phone. So there's there's some advantages to uh, sticking with uh, who your primary care doc is. But if I had had any worry at all, or he had any worry at all, she would have been in his office as quick as I could have sent her over there. So good, good care. Uh, but this is the fun stuff for uh, docs that uh, go into especially emergency room medicine. So if they're life-threatening, I still don't play around. You go right to the emergency room. But a lot of times, you can take care of it at our office. I believe we have a telephone caller joining us, and you're up next. Well, nope, I'm going to try that wrong line, I guess. We'll try this one. You're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Uh, I think we lost both of them. All right, please try again, 736-0300. That is 736-0300. The doctor is willing to take some of your telephone calls today. And you know what? You call them here at the radio station, it won't cost you anything. <laughs> <laughs> you should point Sorry. that part out. That, you know, it's that, like we're sending a bill off in the mail. That also happens at the grocery store. So, you know, that's <laughs> I, I've been found in many places. But, you know, the beauty of being in a smaller town like Twin Falls is there's such a great connection with the community. 
I really enjoy that. You know, I ran into the father of uh, one of the kids we saw earlier in the week while I was at the grocery store last night and able to pass on the information that I just recently got from a subspecialist in pediatrics. So it, it it's fun for me and the connection is there. Um, and, you know, I want people to feel like they belong when they come to our clinic and that they can talk to me. If they need us, you know, we're trying to be there. We're trying to be available. We have a caller with us. Uh, you're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and, of course, Better Health with Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I, uh, it just drives me nuts to see parents that uh, pick up their children by their hands or their wrists or their arms instead of the trunk or their body. Can you tell me where that body is not yet developed? Is there a possibility of shoulder injury or, or whatever up in there? Yeah, this is... Uh... A common injury called a nurse-made elbow, and it comes from the old days when, you know, somebody could afford a nanny, and, uh, you know, the nanny grabs the kid by the wrist, and the kid drops its weight or doesn't want to go and gets their arm yanked, and now all of a sudden they have a dislocation of one of the bones that reaches at the elbow called the radial head, and uh, it's common in under four-year-olds, and often, you know, we try to blame the adult, but often it's the kid. You know, they're holding their hand, and they just literally drop to the floor because they don't want to go where they're supposed to be going or where mom and dad want them to go. Or they're hanging by the monkey bars and, you know, drop their body weight, and they're hanging on with their hand, and that elbow does a little dislocation. It's really simple to put back together, you know, by somebody who's trained to do that, but hurts like crazy. One of my favorite relocations because in about two to three minutes, a kid that couldn't move his arm in terrible pain is back to coloring with that hand or, you know, reaching out to mom that we wouldn't reach out for the last couple hours. So that's, that is true. Shoulder injury, not so much an issue. Um, but yeah, you know, I love to swing my kids around by their hands when, at least when they're little, cause they're getting bigger and I can't swing them at all, but, uh, you know, I'd spin them around. But what I learned is I have to reach up a little higher on the forearm. So mid forearm, instead of at the actual hand or wrist, cause you can break or dislocate that wrist as well. But I wouldn't know that until I saw that experience. 854, and I want to thank the caller for chiming in this morning. 34 at our studios. Uh, Better Health this morning with Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, my daughter got a bad brush burn one time. I was picking her up, and she decided she thought she was being funny and dropped to the floor and, and got a bad brush burn on a hip. Now, sometimes you don't see the skin broken, but that too could become infected, right? As long as there is a truly intact skin, it's very tough to become infected. But if you have even a little bit of penetration, that uh, swelling and bruising becomes a great place to grow stuff. And so, yes, that can change into an infection. Animal bites, too, like a cat bite. I've read where sometimes just uh, what's in the cat's saliva could cause an infection, too. Yeah, no, and this is uh, for cat lovers, cat haters, dog lovers, dog haters. This is real controversy, but the evidence is... Most dog bites won't get infected. 90% of cat bites, even a little puncture of their, their teeth, will get infected. So if you get a cat bite, it really is something that you can maybe watch for 12 or 24 hours. But in that time, if it's your hand, your whole hand may be swollen and infected and become a surgical issue. So cat bites by far are the worst. I was going to say for people who have pets, there have got to be a lot of cautions they have to take out. Uh, during, And you probably see people coming in because somebody stepped on the dog's tail and, you know, they got nipped at and those issues come up as well. Yeah, no, and most of the time it's a question of is this something that needs a, uh, a repair like sutures or whatnot. A lot of times with an animal bite, it's irrigating, cleaning out the wound, avoiding the infection, and if need be, antibiotics. It's, it's more a treatment of the in possible infection rather than repair of the wound. I was going to say, uh, again, for people who'd like to come by your office, easy to find because it's on Fillmore Street in a very busy part of town. And a lot of people who are trying to avoid Blue Lakes Boulevard probably have driven by your office 50, 60 times. Yeah. Uh, but it's directly across from the main post office. It is. Uh, in fact, if you're turning into the post office, turn the other way and you'll run right into our office. We're right there. So it is, it is easy to find, uh, you know, we talked earlier in another show about, I think it's one of the nicest offices I've ever seen. It's not uh, super deluxe, but it sure feels uh, 
shall we say, homey and warm. It is not a sterile environment, and that's the personality we're trying to portray. You have a lot of natural light coming in that building, and uh, I think people, you, you talk about environmental factors do help people with their health, I would believe. Well, it does help me because I live there. So I, I like all the windows and, yes. and the natural light. <laughs> Sitting in a dark room all day would be a little difficult. Yeah, we can, we can talk about vitamin D deficiency, which is <laughs> epidemic in, in Idaho, but uh, that is definitely uh, a nice factor to have all the Yeah, you know, and, and, and for a future topic, too, as well, I, I, some of these vitamins are very difficult to get through a, a, a pill. Uh, from what I understand, and so those are things we'd we'd like to uh, maybe address at uh, a later show. Sure. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp joining us. Quickly, again, for people who'd like to reach you at the office. 933-4400, tripfamilymedicine.com, or Facebook at Trip Family Medicine. And a teaser for next week, we're going to talk about the YMCA's Kids Day that's upcoming that we're a major sponsor of. So we'll talk about that next week. Good story. Do they have a pool? Uh, Not... That particular, yeah, actually they do, uh, down on Elizabeth Street, I'm sorry. That's where I learned to swim when I was a kid, Uh, YMCA. Want to thank the doctor for coming by. Uh, We've got a news break coming up in just a moment from Fox News Radio. Also, Rebecca Milsoika joining us from the Twin Falls City Council. She's on the way. She'll spend a few minutes with us as well. If you have a question or comment for her, feel free to chime in. You're listening to Top Story. This has been Trip, uh, be- or Better Health, we should point out, with Trip Family Medicine. I tripped over the word. There you go. Uh, <laughs> the doctor's had enough of those jokes. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>